Hi, this is Dan with a few thoughts about the Yaesu FT7800 or 7900. They're basically the same rig. One thing I like about this rig is when you turn it on, it gives you your battery or power supply voltage. Pretty cool. One of the keys to understanding this radio is to know the difference between tapping and pressing a button. In other words, what's going to happen if I tap this button and what's going to happen if I press it for a second. And so on any rig, usually I'll look for something that relates to power because that's probably going to be one that I can tap to select different power settings. And sure enough, I see one here that says low. If I tap that, aha, uh -huh, different power levels. Okay. Um, now, so with that logic, if we press this button for a second, it's going to do what it says on the bottom. So here, for example, set or settings. If I press it, I go into my settings menu. And like a lot of Yaesu radios, I really like the architecture here because it's all alphabetical. C, B, C, D, so on and so forth. So well, let's just get a couple of settings while we're here. Automatic power off. Now if I tap it now, I can go in and then I can select the value I want using the tuning knob. So here, APO, that's like your sleep timer on your TV. If I left it there, it would go off in three and a half hours. It'll beep before it does. You'll wonder what that beeping noise is coming until you understand what it is. Okay, so I'm going to tap again to come out. Oh, let's see here. Number four, automatic repeater shift, I think that is. I tap that. If that is on, uh, those are my two options, on and off. That means that it will offset a, the appropriate amount depending on the band that you're on. So let's say you're up on the 70 centimeter band, it's going to offset by 5 megahertz. If you're on 2 meters, it's going to offer, offset uh, 600 kilohertz. So that's how that works. Oh, what else do we have here? Beeps. I hate beeps. Uh, let's see here. Dimmer. Okay. Dim one, two, three, two, one. Set my dim. Okay. And let's see here. 22. Mic. What microphone am I using? I'm using an MH48 right now. This is kind of interesting here. Uh, 28 through 31, program 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is what's going to happen when you hit program 1, 2, 3, or 4 these bottom buttons here. There you go, one, two, three, and four. So for example, let me just tap it. Aha, uh -huh. if I hit that button, it says that I'm going to have the squelch go off. So let's see if that happens. Yep, it sure does. Pretty loud. And so you can program uh, what you want to happen when you, what you want to have happen when you hit those buttons. Very good. Let's see here. RF squelch. Well, we have carrier squelch or noise squelch down here on the left and turn the volume down this time. Let's say we have that up and it's not enough to get rid of the static that we want. We just only want, say, stronger signals to come in. So I'll tap that and I can select the S unit. So right here it would have to be a signal over S8 before it would override the squelch. So that's what that is. And let's keep going here. Uh, repeat mode, repeater mode I think that is. Uh, that's if we want to set the offset manually. Uh, normally it knows which direction to go, but let's say you're programming a particular repeater that has a positive offset when it normally would have a negative. Here's where you'd set that and then you could store it as a memory. Alrighty, let's see here. 35, receive mode. Well, let's see if I'm down, uh, let's say for example in the AM portion, like the aviation section, and it stayed in FM, I could go to AM. So that's AM and auto or FM, that's your options there. Uh, scan. What do I want it to do when I scan? Do I just want it to hold while it's busy? Or do I want it to hold forever? Or do I want to hold it for a certain amount of time? Those are some of your options. Let's see. 39. Shift. What's my shift? Here we have uh, 0.6 megahertz uh, for the VHF portion. But I could set it different if I wanted to. See, let's say you got some standard, a non-standard shift. That's where you would do that. And let's see here. Squelch type. Well, do I want to send out or do I want to, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, send out code or tone? Do I want to send and require tone for it to break the squelch? That's kind of good when you want to unlock a repeater, figure out, you know, you just select different tones and keep trying until you can unlock it. Uh, reverse tone, digital code squelch, a lot of those. More repeaters are starting to use that, by the way. Uh, so, and the step, our tuning step, we can select that. So Tone Freak, that's one you use a lot, especially if you're trying to get into a repeater that you haven't been into before and you're trying to figure out what tone they're using. I'll go ahead and put in uh, Tone Code Squelch and then I'll just go through these until it unlocks the squelch and that's the repeater's uh, CTCSS code. 
All right, so those are just some of the basic settings. The other key I would say for understanding this radio is knowing what this button does here. This shifts between the memory and a home channel, which is just maybe your favorite frequency, which I wish they wouldn't even bother with because, look, as soon as you turn the tuning dial, you're in basic VFO mode. So I don't know why they bothered with it. I guess somebody thought it was a good idea. Maybe some people like it. I don't. So basically, it's switching between VFO and memory mode. So that's what that is. Um, that's pretty much the lay of the land on this rig. Uh, so now you know the difference between tapping these buttons and pressing them. You know how to switch between VFO mode and memory mode. Uh, you know where the power button is, you know, between uh, high and low settings of power. And so hopefully that'll get you started.